in this video we are going to see about installation parameters but before we get started technically I would like to start with a very simple example we all make use of apps for example Instagram and or Uber so before we use start using the app we just need to provide an email or a phone number to get started without providing these values we won't be able to use the application and this is true in the case of other applications as well so for example in the case of uber we provide the phone number details or we register with the social account to get started and you might have guessed you know at this stage that you know these are parameters which the apps require similarly i params are values that the users have to configure you know when they install the applications technically we can leverage installation parameters in the freshworks developer platform using the params.json file and that is the standard approach we can provide the installation parameters as json objects and they'll be rendered as forms and the storage retrieval security extra will be taken care of by the platform itself iprams are extremely versatile which means they can be used for a lot of different reasons in an application or by an application for example as i mentioned earlier you know iprams.json means that you know it's a json file and that json file contains the definition for the iprams which will be used by the application literally you can uh, just provide a json uh, representation of the fields that you would require uh, for an application and these fields will be rendered as forms during the app installation so that you don't have to worry about the way part uh, for collecting the values for the parameters uh, during installation and uh, during the application runtime you can also safely refer them and uh, use them without having worry, uh, without having to worry about you know leaking the credentials or leaking sensitive information on the client side and as you know already anything which is getting stored on the client side is uh, can be inspected can be you know stolen but uh, with the case of iprams uh, it's kind of like a secure storage uh, which doesn't uh, leak the information uh, out of the browser and we'll see how that works uh, as we go along so th in a nutshell this is what iprams it's just a json which lets you uh, define the parameters that will be required for an application and you don't have to worry about the way part because the iprams are chasen automatically abstracts or the platform automatically abstracts that for you and you also don't have to worry about uh, retrieving them and using them in your application because that is also taken care of the platform and it's also like a secure storage that you can comment upon and hey since iprams are actual fields in real world you have a lot of types for that as well and you don't have to worry about implementing each and uh, every one of them in that list so uh, that is also taken care by the iprams so it's a win-win now that we know what iprams do it's time to put them to test and let's get started with coding so i'm going to jump to my visual studio code and uh, let's quickly run through the prerequisites uh, you just need to have ftk installed if not you have to look into the video which is created before and um, you need to have trial fresh disk account uh, you just have to sign up and the basic understanding of JSON would do for this um, you know um, exercise and a little bit of understanding of the developer platform also helps and um, in this video uh, we'll try to uh, do these things so we'll use the FTK to generate a sampler boilerplate uh, we will create iparams using the FTK commands and also from the documentation and uh, we will try to use them securely with a, a request API basically that's the retrieval part of the iparams uh, we will also configure them and uh, in the end we will also see how we can create uh, custom iprams so let's get started okay guys i just created a very simple boilerplate app using the ftk create command it's basically the, basically the your first app template and um, as you can see the structure here it's nothing big it's a very simple front end application and uh, it has a couple of uh, you know iprams files you know which are the usual uh, artifacts in the boilerplate and uh, nothing much here at this stage and it's a very very simple fresh desk application uh, and it's a sidebar app uh, you know with just dummy or empty iprams at this stage so let's see how we can use the documentation to add a couple of uh, iprams we'll add one iparam using the fdk and we'll try to add one by looking at the documentation so i'm back to the documentation and i'm at the installation parameter reference page and as you can see here uh, we can have this sample template from here and we can also know about the other parts like for example the types of the iprams that it supports and also the configuration of the iprams along with the retrieval so 
this is just the reference and uh, we'll just get started with the FDK part because that one is much more exciting so some of you might know the command already but uh, if not it's fine it's the FTK generate command that we will use and in this case since we are going for the standard iparams we have to go with the iparams or json I will choose this and uh, let's maybe uh, have a iPRAM called uh, name so I just called it name and uh, I want it to be a text iPRAM so I just chose it as text I want to do I need another iPRAM Oh, uh, maybe yes so I just uh, give an S and then uh, I'll have another email iPRAM so which is email iPRAM and then I will just choose the type as email in this case and uh, I think I would just stop with this. Do I need iPram.js? I don't need it. And it shows the preview of these iPrams in the console. Uh, so basically this is the JSON representation of the fields that we just mentioned uh, a couple of minutes back in the presentation. And uh, this will be substituted in the in place of the in place of whatever that is in the iPrams.json. So since at this moment we don't have anything there, we can just proceed to uh, overwrite the current file. So Boom, we have the APRAMs here. So you don't have to save it, it's auto saved. And then um, I can clear the console and uh, we can preview this almost immediately. So I can just do FTK run. This is also a command which we'll use very frequently. And if I click on this, it'll take me to the installation parameter page preview where I can enter the sample values for the installation. Uh, parameters so it can be potato and blah 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 at example.com and uh, here you see whatever we have as JSON is getting converted to a form which is shown during the app installation time so this is the beauty of iprams you don't have to implement these forms and uh, if they uh, other to the uh, field types that we mentioned uh, they would automatically take care of storing them so for example if uh, let's say uh, instead of the uh, email field here I just provide a number or something and then if I try to hit install it's going to throw a validation failed uh, oh sorry I messed up the zoom guy sorry uh, yeah as you can see here it's going to show a warning or uh, it's trying it's going to show an error based on the uh, type of violation that we did uh, and um, since we specified this as a email um, iparam, it expects an email and um, if we provide that proper format uh, it's not going to uh, bother us so for example if we give it in the proper format and then if it okay the validation automatically uh, takes care of things for you so we just saw how to create iparams and then uh, we just saw a preview of them now let's see how we can configure them. Let's jump back to the IDE and uh, let's add another IPRM just for the sake of demonstrating uh, the configuration part. I'm just going to call this the, let me minimize this. I'm just going to call this the uh, API, but, 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 here we don't know which properties to define um, here and uh, of course we could refer the ones from the above but uh, let's just go back to the documentation and then uh, refer to the configuration properties which are available I'm just going to the configuration tab and as you can see here these are the metadata for the Epera and uh, in this case we have the display name the type and of course this type is the uh, 11 types that we saw in the, early, in the, the previous slide and uh, the required field which marks it as mandatory or not the description and uh, two additional uh, fields basically you know the secure and reject so secure is a boolean field which uh, conveys whether this field should be secured or not so if it's secure it won't be accessible from the client side you'll see how and uh, if it's a regex you know that's basically for the validation and if you specify a regex it, it basically validates against that particular pattern and if it doesn't other to that it's going to throw an error which you specify in the uh, regex uh, error you know property so uh, let's 
try to create an API IPRM and this API IPRM uh, will be a very secure IPRM of course we cannot uh, keep this key vulnerable on the client side and they should not be able to read it and this is applicable for any sort of uh, secure uh, you know field or IPRM that our app expects so I'm just going to call this the API key and uh, oops sorry what should be the description this could be this is a secure key that how to fill in okay whatever you know it's just a sample thing and the type should be in this case text it doesn't matter and uh, it's required of course it's going to be true and I'm going to mark this oops sorry and I'm going to mark this secure and uh, here we have the IPRM for API I'm just going to add another API uh, another uh, IPRM this is not going to be a secure IPRM so it's basically going to be the house as in the Game of Thrones house uh, blah, blah 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 Twitch house you belong yeah it looks crazy but bear with me for a moment I just go back to the documentation we just want it to be uh, drop down so uh, we just refer the documentation here and we will add it here well of course it has to be Stark Lannister and uh, we will have one more maybe the great choice cool maybe the default can be Stark and okay we have we have I guess we have four IPRMs and we just saw how to configure them based on the documentation and uh, if we go back to the preview and here we have four IPRMs and uh, since this is a secure key let's fill this with uh, I don't know any text value should be fine and um, as you can see here since we define this as you know a uh, drop down it renders a drop down and we don't have to worry about its implementation and these IPRMs are successfully stored so hey we just configured these IPRMs cool now let's see how we can retrieve them